here goes let's meet our patient she is a 37 year old french woman who came into my practice and her first issue was not the smile she wasn't too concerned about her smile i was of course because i wanted her to look good all right so here is her smiling and she was like okay i big deal i'm fine i don't mind this but what was her bigger concern all right now when i focus in i want you guys to appreciate that the gingival zenith don't match on the right and the left if you look closely towards the right side of her face which is the first quadrant i can see more pink right there is a whole lot more of gingival display on one side whilst the other side there ain't as much so what am i thinking here i'm thinking here i'm going to tell my patient that you know what dear we're going to lengthen this we're going to get the proportions correct we're going to get your zenith to match so that you look better and i'm taking these zoomed in pictures making her smile wide it's called the dushian smile like, yeah, give me the widest smile possible crack a joke typically about um, uh, husband wife or boyfriend girlfriend that kind of gets that spark going All right and she's giving me this wide smile and i'm like you know what we could do this we could do that and she's like i'm not too much about my smile doc uh what can we do that is the easiest for me doesn't trouble me too much and we can do it fast i was like you know what wait <laughs> i'm going to try my best to convince you to get the right treatment done so what do i do i take help from digital 2d simulations okay what you are seeing your friends is the dts pro and i'm uh, and, the, and the reason i put it up there is because it is by an indian this is a system and a design that is by an indian orthodontist so i i am very very happy uh, putting this up and sharing it with the world saying you guys could also uh, look at dts okay now what do i do this is where i'm showing her a simulation saying this is what you are and with the 2d i'm showing you this is what i can achieve and and if i were to lengthen the gingiva and and get the perfect zenith right that's how you will look but i also have to show her that if i don't lengthen and if i don't get the zenith right how will it look so i'm showing her two pictures right then and there this is the one where i don't lengthen and i'm showing you the one where i lengthen doesn't the lengthen one look good yeah and and also see how smart i am the one that is not lengthen i've kept them short crowns slightly bulky crowns and a darker shade but the one that i want for her to choose i'm giving nice long slender crowns perfect according to her face and also nice white and bright any guesses what she chose she still chose this one <laughs> it's okay i mean you tried your level best now this is where you don't force your patient to get dentistry done because you want good pictures to show on social media let's be realistic and not real istic all right she still said you know what doc my primary purpose of coming to you is not my smile makeover but my bite makeover what's the problem with the bite okay let me share a quick history here friends for over Eight months for over eight months, this patient was on a permissive splint for her temporomandibular joint disorder. Let me show you a quick intraoral view, and with the splint in my hand at the bottom left, you'd be able to appreciate that this is a hard acrylic flat splint with small canine extensions that the patient was wearing twenty four hours a day, excepting for when eating, for about eight months. Why? this patient had a road traffic accident right unfortunately what happens with an accident is you get a whiplash injury okay there is sudden trauma what this can do is the discs from both sides may displace forward and the condyle starts loading what is called as retrodiscal tissue now no matter how much i press the joint with the disc in place the patient gets no pain because the disc if you remember the definition of centric relation says the disc is a vascular non innervated it has no nerve supply so no pain but the moment the disc gets displaced forward because of the road traffic accident the condyle goes and starts loading the retrodiscal tissue which is filled with nerve supply which means the patient cannot even bring the teeth together the moment she touches teeth she gets pain oh my god that's a that's a 
pretty, pretty bad state to be in, right? How do you treat this case? You first stabilize the TM joint with the help of an orthotic, which is nothing but a permissive splint, also called as a stabilization splint. You may hear this as the Tarnow splint. You may hear this as the Ramford splint. You may hear of this as the SRS splint or the superior repositioning splint. Again, multiple names for the same kind of splint. And that is an ideal splint designed for a temporomandibular joint disorder. Unfortunately, this is not a platform where I am in a position to give you more information. But does that mean I'm going to leave you haywire and astray saying, Dek lo bhai, koi bhi TMJ pain aata hai patient ko nah. I also have this desire to help you gain more knowledge and understanding. And for the same, a quick announcement that I'd like to share with you, friends. In the month of Jan, I have a four-day course dedicated to TM joint pain management. This is 25th through the 28th of Jan. It is right here at the Indian Dental Association head office. In case you are keen on getting more knowledge and information on this, I'm sharing with you a QR code for a WhatsApp number. Just scan the same and ask for details of the TMD course. And my team will be more than happy to share this with you. If you are someone who's new, and says there's too much competition, Mujhe kuch alag karna hai, kuch naya karna hai. this could be your domain because there are hardly any clinicians in this field. If you are someone who's senior in practice, I boring lagta hai, kuch challenge chahiye. this again could be your domain. I would love to take you through the journey of TMD and orofacial pain management during this course. Okay, now what was the concern for this patient? Because she was stabilized on that splint and because she had lost the discs, her bite had completely changed to a point where once we removed the splint, this is how she bites. This is not a physiologic occlusion. If you look closely, there is hardly any contact between the anterior teeth, the posterior teeth on the left side. If you look at the sevens on the top right side, there is no contact between them. Because remember, when the temporomandibular joint settles, there is no way I can confirm which, in which direction will it go. I simply stabilize the joint and that's my protocol. First, take care of the joint because in the presence of an unstable joint, you cannot have a stable occlusion. So stabilize the joint. Once the joint is stable, look at what can you do with the occlusion. Now, the ideal way for this patient, of course, would be telling the patient, you know what, let's look at orthodontics. Because with orthodontics, I can physiologically and within biological limits, reposition these teeth to get the perfect occlusion back. Unfortunately, she's from a different continent and she doesn't have time. And she says, can you do a full mouth reconstruction for me? But try to be as conservative as you possibly can be. Unfortunately, that falls right under my distinct forte, which is to do full mouths using the protocols of tabletop, minimally invasive, partial bonded restorations. And that is what we committed to for this patient. Now, a bigger concern for her was not just her static bite, but I want you to closely look as she goes into a right lateral movement, the canines are not even contacting. What is guiding the occlusion in right lateral? If you look closely, it is the mandibular first molar and that mandibular first molar is actually an implant crown. Always remember friends, most implant failures typically happen post loading. And that is because we are not looking at interferences in lateral excursions. We only check static occlusion. We make sure that the tooth is deocluded so that it doesn't break, but it still fractures. The implant still undergoes some or the other form of breakdown. And that is because there are excursive interferences that also have to be looked into. A similar problem in left lateral. In left lateral, if you look closely again, the, the premolar and the molar guiding, each of these were implant crowns. Now, unfortunately, when you have implants guiding the occlusion, you will have occlusal overload on the implants. And remember, implants don't have periodontal ligament to accommodate. And hence, implant often undergoes biological failures or prosthetic failures. Okay. Now, day one. What do I do on day one? Patient has walked into my practice. Patient has already told me, Doc, I only have 10 days in India. And I want you to do this treatment for me ASAP. So day one, I start with taking pictures for her. I make an intraoral scan. 
I've removed the splint. I've scanned the upper arch, scanned the lower arch. The patient bites down. I scan the bite. Now, this is the neutral bite position in which I have to do my entire reconstruction so that I can get uniform intensity contact on all teeth. What have I also done? I have also at this time communicated with my laboratory technician and told the technician that I am going to have this patient come in and I want to keep yourself, keep yourself free for me. I want you to make sure that you don't waste my time or my patient's time by taking up some other case. This should be on our top priority. All right. So this discussion has already been done with the technician. What does the technician do? This is the best part. No impressions, right? No model pouring, no shipping, no couriering, no nothing, which means in about three or four hours on day one itself, the technician has sent this back to me. This is a 2D design, all right, that I can actually see in three dimensions. That's brilliant, right? Because I can move things around. And if my patient says, I want this a little longer, I want this to be like this. If I feel the bite needs to be corrected a little bit, all of these corrections can be made digitally to a point where I and my patient are both convinced that this is the right thing moving forward. What do I do? I get these models 3D printed. 3D printing again doesn't take too long. So I get these 3D mod, uh, models printed. I make putty indices. Remember I told you putty indices still analog. You, you can't go uh, digital with putty indices. So you make putty indices freehand. And I love to use C silicon for making putty indices. Quick question, C. What does C stand for? C, C. C stands for cheap. It is a sasta and a sundar silicon material for making putty indices. Remember, it's not a good material for making impressions, but for making your indices, it works just fine. So I make a putty index. I give the patient a test drive on day two. Okay. So day one is all about my planning. Day two is when I start executing. Day two, first appointment in the morning. I have cleared my entire schedule for the day. My only and only top priority is that patient. I'm going to start with my full mouth test drive and volumetric reductions through the test drive. And on day two, I'm going to complete all my tooth preparations. Now, the advantage is because I am minimally invasive, because I'm going to do partial bonded restoration, some veneers, some crown lays, some overlays, the amount of preparation is not that much, which means the amount of time that I take per preparation is less. So I am not going to tire the patient out completely. I am not completely drained either, but it is extremely fulfilling and very satisfying to see your work coming out like this, minimally invasive, maximally productive. Haven't we moved away from amalgam and we now do composite today? Is it only because of aesthetics? No. With amalgam, we had to be extremely aggressive with our preparations. And I love to quote GV Black on this. And we all remember this, right? Extension for prevention. I'm talking about the entire other end of the domain, which is prevention of extension. Just reshuffle the words and it's a new world altogether. Minimally invasive biomimetic dentistry. That's, the, that's my understanding of the future. The future of dentistry is aesthetically determined, digitally influenced, and enamel-based. Right? Preserve what exists rather than meticulous replacement of what has been lost is what divan dictum states. So I'm trying to be as conservative. I am still on day two. What do I do immediately after I complete my preps? I go ahead and make my scans. All right. These scans are made at the final vertical dimension in centric relation. Now, the question that I know that's coming in your minds is once I've prepared all the teeth, how do I get the vertical dimension right? And more importantly, how do I get my centric relation correct? One thing that I want to point out here right now, friends, is whenever you are doing a digital full mouth reconstruction, you have to take the CR record at your final vertical dimension. I repeat myself, you will take your centric relation bite record at your final vertical dimension only. Remember, when you do analog, Okay, which means when you've mounted a semi-adjustable articulator, you can open and close the bite when you have taken a face bow record. You can do that. You can raise the vertical, drop the vertical on a semi-adjustable articulator without loss of accuracy. But when you do digital articulation, what you see right now is upper and lower casts digitally articulated. There is no true hinge axis. 
So what happens here is when you work with digital articulators, digital articulators open like this, straight down. How do we open our jaws? Downward and backward. This is yet not possible on a digital or a simulation, which is digital, which means on digital articulation, you have to record your vertical dimension at the final position itself. You cannot or should not raise or drop the VD when you are working with digital protocol. So the question arises, how do I get that vertical dimension correct? And the answer, friends, is with the help of leaf gauge. What is a leaf gauge? Strips of mylar. You see something that I have designed here because unfortunately, our India mein milta nahi hai. and that is why I have gone through the effort of getting these designed, manufactured, and they are now available with MIK Dental. These are strips of mylar that are numbered. It goes from one up to 60 and each leaf is 100 microns, which basically means 10 leaves gives me one millimeter. So what am I doing here? I want you guys to understand this on this particular picture. Okay, what do I do? I measure from zenith to zenith. What is this? This is my technician sending me a digital test drive. What do I do on that test drive is I measure from zenith to zenith. Which zenith to zenith? Maxillary incisal edge to mandibular incisal edge. Okay, so I am measuring from the gingival zenith here of the central up to the gingival zenith of the lower central. Let's say, for example, this distance is about 20 millimeters. Just giving you a random understanding, it is 20 millimeters. So what will I do now? I will, with the help of the leaf gauge, increase or decrease the number of leaves till the zenith to zenith distance once again comes back to 20, which means I have reproduced the vertical dimension that I had gotten approval for during my test drive. I am not looking at allowing my technician to open or close the vertical digitally. I am giving my final CR at the final VD with the help of this leaf cage. I hope you've understood this concept of getting the VD right with the help of the leaf cage because you can increase or decrease the number of leaves whenever you want. Every leaf that you subtract, you are dropping the vertical by 0.1 millimeter. Every leaf that you add, you are increasing the vertical by 0.1. So you have a lot of control. If your zenith to zenith distance in your test drive was 20.2 millimeters, can you recreate that with the leaf gauge? Yes, you can. Absolutely possible. Okay. Now, when it comes to centric relation, I am someone who's a very, very strong believer in working in a neutral jaw position. If you've ever attended any of my lectures or courses on a full mouth reconstruction topic, I always say CR is the most important aspect that determines the success against failure of your full mouth case. I am not comfortable yet with the byte scan that I get with the help of the digital technology because the byte scan is made with no contact whatsoever. If I were to go back and show you this, you will realize that there is no contact between the upper and the lower. There's actually gap, there's air in between. So I am never 100% confident if my scanner has been able to scan and record the byte to complete precision. So what do I do? This is where I go, Andy. I bring in the analog world in and I go ahead and at that same vertical of 28 leaves, which is specific to this patient, I go ahead and record a physical CR byte with the help of BITAL, which is an aluminum reinforced block of byte registration wax, not modeling wax. Mind you. Okay. Remember, all of this is still happening on day two. I have completed my preparations. I have scanned the upper arch, scanned the lower arch, scanned the bite, but I have also made a physical CR record. Is that where I stop with my analog world? No. I also go ahead and take a face bow for this patient. Why do I take a face bow for this patient? If you look closely, the there is a cant to the maxilla. Remember the patient's gingival zeniths were not matching. And that wasn't because the gingiva was incorrect. It is because the entire plane of the maxilla was canted. 
And here you can appreciate this with the help of the red line that I am drawing to help you understand that the maxilla is not flat in this patient, it's canted. Now, please try to understand if the maxilla is canted and if my technician doesn't realize or is not told that the maxilla is canted, what will happen is when the technician sends me the final restorations, they all look perfectly straight on the model. But when I place it in the patient's mouth, the entire bite goes off. And it's going to look horrendous. Because if your incisal plane is not parallel to the interpupillary line, it is an aesthetic failure. Your midline is not going to be straight. Your midline is going to be canted. Your entire occlusal plane is going to be canted. And that is why for this specific patient, I went the extra step of an analog in uh, analog step, which was to record a face bone. I did not do all of this as a part of my planning. Remember that I am doing all of this as a part of my definitive porcelain work because I don't want to take chances. So what were the analog steps that I did? I took a CR record and I made a face bow record. If you do not know how to take a face bow record, go ahead and learn it. I'm telling you it's the simplest thing possible on earth. Hame bas dar hai. It's it's just a mental block that Facebook, yaar, ye to prosthodontist ka ye kaam hai, nahi hai. Anyone can take a Facebook. It's it's just a matter of committing to it. Tum ek bar karoge na, dusri bar tum kisi ko sikhane jaoge, ye guarantee hai mera. And I know for clinics where the technician comes in to take a Facebook. Socho yaar, agar technician kar sakta hai, to hum kyu nahi? It's all about committing to learning the art. That's about it. Okay? Darna nahi hai, dar ke aage jeet hai. और मैं मस्ती मस्ती में कहता हूं डर के आगे जीत है जीत के आगे जग जीत है सो चिल इट्स ओके ऑल राइट द थर्ड थिंग दैट आई डिड एनालॉग फॉर दिस पेशेंट इज आई एक्चुअली वेंट अहेड एंड मेड फिजिकल इंप्रेशंस आई नो यू आर वंडरिंग यार फुल माउथ स्कैन तो किया फिर इंप्रेशन काय को दिस इज वेयर आई एम टेलिंग यू फॉर सिंगल यूनिट टू यूनिट्स थ्री यूनिट्स ब्रिजेस वगैरह कर रहे हो ना स्कैन इज मोर देन सफिशिएंट टू गिव यू अ ब्रिलियंट प्रेडिक्टेबल एंड a very very accurate result but when i'm talking about full mouth reconstructions i think there is still room for improvement especially when i do minimally invasive dentistry why is that a lot of minimally invasive dentistry friends does not involve opening contacts or opening contacts just a little bit so here i'm going to show you this particular patient same view four different perspectives first the patient's lower incisal view then the scan view the printed model view and the stone cast view and i want all of you all to appreciate this as i zoom into this one if you look at the two incisors the lower incisors towards the midline and then towards the left side of the screen you will see that i've created a sliver of a gap i have not opened the contact completely but thoda sa gap create kiya hai taki wo die cutting ditching ka kaam ho sake okay now an important thing to remember here is unfortunately our scanners are not as accurate today to catch that little gap that is why what you see here on screen is that gap seems to be captured and closed digitally is it closed in my patient's mouth it's not but on the scan here it looks like it's closed if it's closed on the scan of course it will be closed on the 3d printed model this is where i go back to my impression because my impression can pour a cast which is so damn accurate where the smallest of gap can be recreated which is why when i'm working on my definitive restorations i want my technician to do the fit check on the stone model specifically when i am doing my partial restorations let me show you the same thing from another perspective towards the front you can see small gaps that i've created the scanner does not catch those gaps this is so obvious right if you look closely between the incisal edges rather between the incisors there is a small gap that i've created the scanner has not captured that gap and i'm talking about scanning in hd in that area with the best scanners available in the market which means my 3d printed model also has a defect in a sense but my stone cast has a very accurate reproduction which is why i go back to this then why am i still sticking to digital अगर मुझे एनालॉग ही करना है तो पूरा एनालॉग क्यों ना करूं एंड दिस इज वेयर द कॉपी पेस्ट ऑफ डिजिटल कम्स इन लुक हियर दिस इज माय डिजिटल प्लान दिस इज व्हाट माय पेशेंट हैज अप्रूव्ड एज अ पार्ट ऑफ माय टेस्ट ड्राइव दिस इज वेयर आई लव डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी बिकॉज़ माय फाइनल लुक क्लोजली इज अ रेप्लिका इज एन एब्सोल्यूट डुप्लिकेट आई विल नेवर हैव अ सिचुएशन वेयर माय पेशेंट विल बी लाइक नहीं बट वो डिजाइन तो अलग था वो टेंपरेरी तो अलग दिख रहे थे वो टेस्ट ड्राइव तो अलग था फाइनल अलग है आई डोंट वांट दैट सिनेरियो 
I don't want my patient questioning whether I have done the right job or not. And this is not just from the aesthetic front. More importantly, this is from the palatal and occlusal face as well. The final is an exact replica in every sense, which means if I've gotten my occlusion correct in my test drive, I don't need to do a lot of adjustments with my final. And that is the reason why, friends, I love digital technology so much. But as I said, I am still working with a semi-adjustable articulator. And I'll show you one more reason why semi-adjustable articulators are still important. And I'm talking day three, day four, because day one, I planning planning, day two, I have preparation, kia. day three, day four is for my technician to fabricate these restorations and send them back to me. You can see all of these are individual restorations. None of these are splinted. These are all lithium disilicate, Emax, milled. Okay, which means I've gotten the exact duplicate. Now, what do I do? On day five, I go ahead and bond all of these in. Day five, I have completed the bonding. Remember, these are not cemented, which means GIC se chipkaya nahi hai. Resin se ek ek ko individually bond kiya hai. And this is my patient's bite immediately after bonding. CR equal MIP. You can see all the teeth are perfectly contacting and intercuspating. Another brilliant aspect that I love about digital technology is as soon as I've completed the case, I go ahead and I scan. Okay. Let me first share a limitation here. Ek limitation kya hai? Because it does not have a true hinge axis. Okay. There are new simulations that can give you these excursive movements as well. So what my technician did here is he designed everything to make sure that there are no posterior interferences to make sure there is canine disocclusion, make sure there is protrusive disocclusion, which means there is mutually protected occlusion as a part of the digital setup. Panga kaha ma bata apko? Panga hua jab maine actually inko analog simulator pe kiya, which means when I checked the lateral excursion, on the semi-adjustable articulator, I found there were interferences. Look here, in right lateral, in right lateral, everything looks good. You can see the canine is guiding. There are no interferences. These are very close to each other and that's okay. Problem was when I took this articulator into left lateral. I want you to look closely at the terminal molars. The seven and the six in the patient's mouth, according to digital simulation said, no interferences. Remember, digital simulator told me no interferences. On the semi-adjustable articulator, I could see interferences. So what do I want to do? I want to test whether the digital analog is correct. Uh, sorry, the digital planning was correct or whether the semi-adjustable articulator is correct. Once again, repeating, digital simulation told me no interference. Semi-adjustable articulator told me interference in left lateral. So I went into the patient's mouth after bonding and I asked my patient to go into excursive movements. Here she's going into a right lateral movement. What do you see? You see canine guidance, which is something that I saw as a part of the digital world and also as a part of the analog world. So I was very happy. But when I asked my patient to go into a left lateral movement, I want you guys to look closely. That terminal molar is actually in interference, which means in lateral excursion, the lower seven is touching the upper seven. That's not something that's desirable. Agar ye interference chhod diya na aapne, this is typically where ya to ceramic fracture hoga piche, ya ceramic debond hoga or something that's very common. Upper seven will start drifting distally and there will be food lodgement between the six and the seven and you will be left wondering, yaar ye gap to pehle nahi tha, ab kaha se aaya? If you leave a posterior interference in lateral excursion, there is a possibility that your terminal maxillary molar may start drifting distally, creating an open contact and inviting food lodgement between the six and the seven. I do not want that. What do I do? I take my articulating papers. I identify the interference. I trim the interference and I leave my patient like this. This is pure canine guidance in left lateral. There is no posterior interference What? So ever. That is how I want to plan and execute, which means my digital planning in this regard for lateral excursion fell short, which is the reason why, friends, Andy, semi-adjustable articulator abhi lagega to get the perfect fit of your restorations, especially when you do partial restorations, and also to make sure that you do not have lateral interferences. Now, 
one big advantage that I believe is a part of this digital world. And that is the fact that after I've done all my work, I can scan again. And now you're wondering, why am I scanning after the full mouth is done? And this is contingency planning, friends. This is planning for the worst case scenario. Imagine, imagine two years, four years, six years. Worst case scenario, one of these restorations debonds or comes out. And your patient says, you know what, doc? Uh, can you get that one restoration made for me? If it was the analog world, what, you what do you need to do? You have to call your patient in, make your impression, send it to the lab, tell the lab to make it, come back, tell the patient, come back again. But with the digital world, all of this can be stored in the library. And in the library, all of these are individual designs. So what can the technician do? You know what? You call the technician. You know what, brother? Uh, two, six. Okay, sir. Design to already ready, right? Na impression ki zarurat hai, na kisi bite scan ki zarurat hai. Everything is in there. He will copy paste, send a restoration. Patient comes in same day, bond, patient out. Brilliant. I mean, I personally love this because occlusion, fit, proximal contacts, everything can be catered to with this particular technology. And of course, using the anti protocols, for me, what's most important is I can leave my patient uh, extremely happy, smiling. And uh, more importantly to me, it is to change my patient's lives because we're not looking at just changing the smile. We're looking at changing the bite and changing the patient's perspective towards themselves. And this is how, friends, from start to end, I was able to complete a full mouth reconstruction using the principles and protocols of analog and digital work together. So it is not a complete digital full mouth, but it is a digitally influenced full mouth reconstruction. Here again, I share a quote with you by the late Steve Jobs, who says, if you do what excites you, you don't have to be pushed. The vision will pull you. I have a question for you now. And the question is, friends, do you wish to learn more from me? Huh? Ha, bola. Pakka. Okay. Guess what? I'm very, very happy, friends, to share with you that a whole lot of my content is now pre-recorded and available on mikeducation.com. If you cannot reach me, if I am not coming to your city, it does not mean that you cannot learn from me. Allow me the opportunity to share my knowledge with you on an online platform. Full mouth reconstructions, temporomandibular joint disorders, complete dentures, porcelain veneers, uh, crown and bridge dentistry, occlusion. I've tried to record almost everything and put it up. And feel free to use this promo code so that you can get special discounts when you go ahead and register for the same. If you want to learn from me in person, I'm happy to share friends that if you are someone who wants to be a certified full mouth reconstruction specialist, if you have questions that you want to ask me live, then I am also doing a full mouth reconstruction live event, which is planned for Jan. Again, the same QR code. If you want more information, go ahead and check it out. And I'm very, 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 very happy and thrilled to make an announcement on this platform today. If you want to go through the FMR journey with me, not just for a few days, but commit for the long haul. It's like, sir, you have to do full mouth with me. You have to do a full mouth with me. I want to do a full mouth with you. You see. I want to do a full mouth with you. You have to do a full mouth with me. You have to do a full mouth with me. It's possible. Okay. Just laying the foundation here, friends. Very, very soon. All right. If everything goes as planned, come March of 2024. March of 2024, we will be launching a full mouth reconstruction fellowship program where you will be doing a full mouth on a patient in my physical presence. Fingers crossed, this is with the Indian Dental Association. This will be in Mumbai at the head office. Watch out for more information on the same. And if this idea tickles your brain, you have taken the first step towards becoming self-confident. Eliminate that fear. Full mouth is all about knowledge. And remember, knowledge is the perfect antidote for fear. I am here to help you through that particular 
journey. At this point, I'd like to extend a big thank you to all of you who have sat through this hour long session with me. I hope it did justice to the time and effort that you spent. I know those eyes are droopy right now because this is sleep time. Right. One last thing, if you want to stay connected with me, go ahead and uh, follow me on social media. And I'm sharing these QR codes because there's a lot of amazing content and I do not want you to lose out on that learning with me. As I close this presentation, friends, I'd like to tell you Andy is the way forward with respect to full mouth reconstructions.